Okay, sports fans, as we can see, hopefully, we've been somewhat busy today. So what we've managed to do has been to get the motor controller installed. That's uh, bolted in now on top of the traction motor. And what I elected to do with this was to go with an all aluminium uh, bracketry system in there instead of what I had originally planned to do was just use uh, some steel and that to make up uh, brackets but the procedure that I used was to make some risers out of a 25mm plate which are bolted down to the two motor mounts on either side then with a piece of 10 millimeter aluminium plate excuse me that's uh, bolted down to that and the controller bolts to that plate with four m8 uh, stainless steel bolts just using some m16 nuts under each corner as uh, standoffs just to keep the just to keep the heads of the uh, heatsink bolts just maybe barely a millimeter above the plate so also what we have done is we have connected up all of the traction cables to the motor terminals uh, we put in the bridge and installed the M plus M minus terminals from the controller additionally to that we've installed a, another 10 millimeter aluminium plate here in the front uh, basically that's bolted into the chassis with some of the rib nuts and some uh, aluminium angle just to hold the plate in the front area and that carries uh, some of the big parts like the shunt, the fuse, relays, uh, throttle body that's the high current relay for the uh, power steering pump so that'll be connected up to that. We've also got a relay here for the brake vacuum pump and some various uh, control and logic relays here just for turning on and off the 12 volt systems uh, or I should say 12 volt power to things like the controller, brake pump, power steering pump, all that sort of thing. So that's really uh, a lot of what I've been doing. Obviously getting the controller built and reasonably tested was a large part of that as well. Uh, but now we're in a position that very soon we'll be able to do a little test drive. I'll probably just use the front battery box. There's 10 cells in that. That'll be sufficient to do uh, test the systems at a lower voltage. And we'll then need to be looking at things like installing the uh, um, undercar cable ducting uh, for traction, charging and signal cables. And we need to start looking at a charger see uh, what procedure that I'm going to use for that. There's plenty of free space in this area here to accommodate that. Also behind the controller there's a bit of space in here for what I'm going to install in there will be the cooling pump for the controller and the fill bottle. Now we have a radiator to install on the front. I'll probably end up on this bill using the same cooling system for both the charger and the controller it'll save on the complexity um, what else okay that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much of what we have done um, I'll take the camera off the tripod now I'll just do a few little close-ups on some of the components but it's a lot of work there's a lot of what John Hardy calls iron mongery in this case it was more aluminium mongery than iron 
kind of generated uh, two or three buckets of swarf that I'm still trying to get out of my clothes. Apart from that, can't complain too much. At least it's done. I'm going to have to start looking at a excess turbos blower of eventually when we start going to full power but for now low voltage testing uh, the motor won't even uh, know it's turning so don't need to worry about that at this stage um, so yeah that's uh, that's about the size of it so we'll have a little bit of a close up alrighty so Hopefully we'll be able to see, that's one of the uh, pillars just bolted in there onto the motor mount that's 25mm thick aluminium plate that comes up to join the, uh, oh there's a bolt I forgot to tighten good man Damien Jeez. driving down the street that decides to come out oh well so anyway as I was saying, there's where our plate sits on top of the motor. There's another pillar over on this side. And uh, hopefully you see that okay. Again that bolts down through the through the block. Some very long stainless bolts and they're countersunk heads on the top. Plate then uh, you can see here, this is where the controller bolts down to the uh, plate. And around the back area here, I've got plenty of space to install the uh, cooling pump and uh, fill bottle. And I've drilled and tapped some M8 holes, just that. A uh, few predetermined locations in there just to ease. Install installation of those components. Now, what else is there? So on the front plate, have our fuse holder, uh, 500 amp, 75 millivolt shunt for the JLDs. Uh, a bit of din rail for the relays. We've got our throttle body um, bolted down. It can do the do its thing. High current relay there for the uh, power steering pump, as previously mentioned. So that is also in there. We've got the vacuum switch for the brake pump. So I have to make a little enclosure for my little Arduino and uh, figure out. Um, just to figure out how I'm going to be tapping my throttle signals. I'm not sure whether I'm going to take a signal from the throttle body or from the throttle pedal as yet. So that needs to be determined as they say. I might need to protect some of those cables in there with a bit of uh, flexible conduit as well. Uh, we need to put in our ducting to the air intakes. So. But this is it. Good bit of progress. Um, Finally starting to see a bit of uh, light on this project. I should be able to drive it a little bit, uh, which would be quite handy. So stay with us, folks, and uh, hopefully pretty soon, 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 the land yacht will be uh, rolling under magneto-ionic propulsion. Stay tuned.